We share a name. My middle name is Gabrielle. It's Elizabeth Gabrielle. Work. So pleasure. Work. Okay. Happy belated birthday. I did a little bit of oh, Instagram thank stalking. Thank you. Oh. I appreciate that. Uh, it was a big one for me. Is it your birthday today? No. Today? No, it no. was your birthday two, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I mean, like, are we that horrible that Gabrielle knew it was your birthday? And we did. <laughs> I, I know. I feel like, proud. Of it. You wish you were on my, on my happy birthday Zoom toast. <laughs> you guys, we're in the upside down in this quarantine. Who knows? Like, everyone, <laughs> everyone gets a pandemic pass, I think, really. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> don't know. I'm saying something that happened in the past, but I could also be predicting the future. So, I know. Who knows? Gabrielle Ruiz, yes. why do you need to leave early? Because there is this Teachers Appreciation Day on Cinco de Mayo, which is also hashtag Giving Tuesday Now, which is also hashtag Teacher Appreciation Day this, this 5th of May. And John mm -hmm. Legend uh, pulled out of a music uh, song moment for the appreciation whole thing. He's just going to wow. speak instead. And they were like, can you do it? <laughs> ah! <laughs> now, for all the listeners out there, that's my version of the story okay <laughs> point of view that's what i heard when they asked me to do it and so um they needed original music because of copyright ex you know expedite this process i literally got the call two days ago and you know it's up it's coming up on this tuesday and my husband wrote a song lo and behold for our first friend that passed away due to covid it's called Hug Yourself for Me, and it's dedicated to the world. And we showed it to her, and she like started bawling. And she's like, that's exactly it. So we're going to record it later today to be able to send it to them. Honestly, I have no idea how it's being streamed. I have no idea what's happening. But apparently, like, 3 million teachers are going to watch it, and they're raising, like, billions of dollars for them. It's called – I don't even know. That's how fast it's going right now. I want to talk about – COVID for a hot second a little bit. I just had one of my best friend's parents who is like a volunteer EMT passed away. So I wanted to ask you about Adam Schlesinger and his like effect on your work. Uh, I've had a weird sort of relationship with, with that guy, not personally, but uh, my sister's name is Stacy and I did go to high school. So there was a time where uh, life was really hard because of that song. And then I found out he was like a Broadway <laughs> composer too and i'm just like is that does this guy like just do everything in spite of me but he's so ridiculous he was so ridiculously talented and his, his work speaks for itself but i yeah. want to ask you that. well that's who the song is dedicated to and was inspired from it was adam schlesinger that was our first friend that passed away and i was a super fan of him as well before crazy ex-girlfriend my first like interaction with his work to my heart was um, That Thing You Do, the film. And he wrote the song, That Thing You Do. And it's based off of kind of like a Beatles sensation, one hit wonder story from the 50s. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. Tom Hanks is in it. And Ooh. oh, and um, Liv Shriver's in it too. And Ooh. it's fantastic. It's musical oriented, but it's the whole story of how like these one hit wonders were touring around the world and like trying to become sensations. And then all of a sudden everything just like blows over. Right. And so he wrote the song, that thing you do for the film, that thing you do. And the song is an earworm and Adam Schlesinger is famous for knowing for, is famous for creating earworms that really hit you and you will never forget them. Hmm. And so um, when I found out that he was one of the writers for crazy ex-girlfriend, I just was beside myself because wow. he is so brilliant and so fantastic and so chill. And he's a New Yorker too. And I was a trans, I was a transplant from New York to LA and hmm. he has two houses. I don't, you know, coast to coast, but like, you know, <laughs> he would visit LA as a New Yorker. So it was really fun to have that vibe in the room. When I was able to go to his studio and re-record Valencia's second song that became Women Gotta Stick Together. There was, it was primarily, it was first initially in the table read like this um, villain, um, poor unfortunate souls, Little Mermaid kind of thing, Ursula song, mm. where she was just like, I hate women. And then Rachel <laughs> and, and Adam and Jack were like, we should make it a parody because that's our intention. I mean, it was episode like four or five of season one. So things were still being figured out. So they wrote it, they rewrote it within a day. And then I recorded wow. it the next day in like musical Broadway theater kids, mm -hmm. get it done. She's like, so 
I think Valencia plays the guitar. So you play the guitar, right? And I was like, no, I don't. But like, as an understudy, I always am like, I don't know. I mean, I'll just fake it till I make it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I said, I, I, I don't. So what do I do? And he's like, oh, it's super easy. He's like, it's Hollywood. You can totally fake it. And I said, that's true. <laughs> so it was like one of my first lessons of Hollywood, like how much more faker it is than theater. <laughs> Broadway. <laughs> and like how much more you can get away with. Some girls are born tall and thin. And some are short and fat. This girl smells like sausages, but there's nothing wrong with that. Women gotta stick together all across this land. But at the same time, when we found out, I would say a week before it was leaked that he was ill, that he was on a ventilator. And so that was the first uh, person that it became really close to home about being affected with COVID-19. And then he was doing better like three days later. And then on April 1st, now it's been over a month, we got the text that, and, and the text that you send, and it was from Aline Brush McKenna, our creator and uh, showrunner of the show, Crazy X, and she said the text. She's like, "I'm so sorry, but Adam passed away." And it was to the Crazy X family, like group text, and like it. Uh, when it comes to funerals and deaths, I'm usually the person that's making sure everyone's okay. I usually end up singing, or I end up like just you know keeping people comfortable, or you know, and then I cry later is usually how I deal. But this one, just like I just had to sit there and cry, and then and. It just shouldn't have been Adam, you know? And I feel like there's a lot of people that find that relatable. He was so young. He was healthy. He just didn't feel well. His girlfriend just posted on Instagram her, her last, the last time she saw him. And that was taking him to the hospital because he didn't feel well. And then she just never saw him again. And that's just, yeah. and he she talked to him on the phone, I think that night. And then it, his, it was within maybe like less than a week that his, his health just plummeted. So it, it hurt a lot. It still hurts. And I still think about Adam on tour with the Crazy Ex-Girlfriend shows that we did. I that's when I really got to know him. And it still like really, really hits my gut that he, he uh, it's like when you remember like someone falling or breaking their leg in front of you and you just go, ooh, like you wince and you're like, no, that shouldn't have happened. Or, you know, it feels like that, like it shouldn't have happened. So I'm not in denial, I don't think, but I, I'm still mourning for sure course and like I think the fact that you're articulating it and like saying out loud that that's a part of 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 healing yeah through this it was the first like you know hit of deaths for everyone in the world everyone in the U.S. I think you know it started finally hitting that everyone's like oh shoot I'm gonna know at least one person that's either sick or it's gonna die and uh mm -hmm. there is no funeral there's no memorial that's the other thing. And so none of us could get together. We all kind of, I called, I called Vela Lavelle and I called Catherine Burns, our choreographer, and we were able to just at least talk and cry. And so that's what inspired the song, Hug Yourself for Me, uh, made, yes. written by my husband, Philip Hassanjan. And that's what Philip and I did that next day. Like we kind of had our own memorial service and a way of just expressing the way we know, which is through music and, and creating, creating and, yeah. and how we feel. And so, at least we had that and yes yeah you and can he'd find probably that on my, yeah i know you can find that on the on my igtv if you want to see it and we can use yes. it because it's ours so that's wonderful i'm gonna i'm gonna give that introduction a shot it's gonna be it's gonna be wild and it's gonna be a journey our guest is a woman that woman is an actress she's best known for her role as valencia perez on crazy ex-girlfriend she is appeared on broadway three times. And she has played roles in In the Heights, Evita. I'm going to say that one more time. Evita. Gabrielle Ruiz is our guest. Ooh. Pleasure. Hi. Oh my gosh. Thank you for the applause from across the world. I really felt <laughs> it. I felt it in my room. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you in LA, but you're in New York. You really, like you started I'm in New York. So New York. I am still, my mom <laughs> warded it well. She's like, you're still a New Yorkaholic. And I was like, thank you. And there's oh people in LA that are like, aren't you burnt out? And I just reply with like, aren't you bored? <laughs> Speaking of, a star is bored. Like, come on, make something going on. 
but you know, Hollywood, Hollywood does have a very different schedule, which I like. And I feel as theater kids, we have a, we have a great stamina for it. Um, I, there are things I don't miss about New York. I will say that. I, I yeah, do tell love, us about that. I do Sam. love the, for, the number one thing I don't miss are the mosquitoes. <laughs> I'm dealing with them right now. I don't miss the humidity. Look at my hair. It's so no, I, pretty. Yes, and it really is. I don't have to like get cute and then get ugly on the subway and, <laughs> again. and then, um, yeah, the, the drive of the city I love, but I couldn't have coffee there because I would just go on overdrive due to the mm. city and the angst and the, the you know, this, ah, the drive, foaming at the mouth, ah, you know. <laughs> um, I can have coffee again in LA because everyone is so chill. And when it comes yeah. to television, it was the first time in my career that I had weekends. Mm. Wow. And I could go back like, to work on Monday. Like, what is that world? What? When they were like, see you no, on not Monday. in New York. No. I was never in New York. Yeah. Weekends are so, my work days. Always. Yeah, and so the Monday day off in New in in the theater world is is a productive day off, and you know you get stuff done. You go to the doctor, you get groceries, you rest. Rest to me is a task that I have to do, and I don't I don't miss that. I love what it gave me, and I know she'll be there when I ever return. And I was able to return twice last summer and the summer before because some things did call me back, and I was like. Ah! New York is so great. And the third day, I was like, get me out of get here. Get me out. <laughs> That's actually what I meant to ask you about. You've had a very incredible career in theater. What Thank has you. that transition been like from theater to TV, especially as a Latina actress? Well, I love that Valencia wasn't really leaned on for being Latina. You know, mm. she, she really was leaned on for being the mean girl. Um, <laughs> they really... Uh, honored the dynamic of West Covina. It's a real town outside of LA. And mm. there's a Filipino and Latino world here, Latinx. And mm. uh, they date, you know? And so they really just honored that dynamic. And that's who, you know, uh, Vinny's role, um, Josh and Valencia, that they're, they're a typical couple. When it comes from theater, I did, you know, In the Heights, which is Latino. Mm -hmm. I did Evita, which is Latinx as well. And so, yeah. and If Then was the first, like, not like, you know, I was not anybody. I was just a New Yorker. So mm -hmm. it was nice to, um, as, as a Latina in, in the Hollywood scene, I'm also lucky that I was introduced to the Hollywood scene in the Me Too movement as mm -hmm. well. I, I didn't get the, there was only, I, I didn't get some of the horror story experiences yeah. in my, like, general appointments with casting directors or anything like that like I never felt compromised or forced to um I'm not saying like I was like about to be this huge star where I was having that conversation with the Harvey Weinstein but like there was only one publicist that said and she was a woman and she was like man it's a it's a bummer that you're married because we can't do like that whole dating scene thing with you okay. and I was like bitch I have <laughs> years to find my husband. Okay. He's a New Yorker, and I got on Match.com. It was my third dating website because <laughs> yes. I was sick and tired of dating the show pony on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And I did it three times. I stuck three out. I, I struck out three times. Get the fuck out of my way, okay? Exactly. He is staying, and I am happy. And he is showing. He is my number. He is my plus one on that fucking red carpet. Oh. I didn't. I didn't hire her. Thank you guys. <laughs> Mark so, Carolina. you know, so that was the only time where I was just like, wow, that's, that's Hollywood. Oh, that's, that's the story I hear, you know, the, the, the <laughs> dating, you know, dating your coworker. But I did that in theater. Like I, I did have the amazing showmans and in the nights and I loved it. I'm so glad it's over. But, um, so that's, that's, have, that has been my experience. Mm -hmm. Now that you mentioned in the Heights, um, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn helped you out. Lynn Manuel Miranda. He's got my gave back. you a leg up. He got your back. And like, I, I hear that for people. Like once you're part of his people, once you show up for him, he shows up for you. And like, I respect that, that ideology. He's so, so much. Yeah, um, he's truly one of a kind. Yeah, he, he, gave, he got you a audition for Crazy Ex-Girlfriend while you were <laughs> in the Heights. You weren't in the like no, original. That, I, right? I, I replaced Krista Rodriguez when she left for Adam's Family. <sighs> 
Oh, wow. Gosh. Yeah. And funny enough, go back a year before that, I auditioned for the original cast of In the Heights. Super Ooh. green, just moved to New York. I'm a dance major from my college. I'm not a musical theater major. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I was classically trained in public school uh, vocally. So I always give mad, mad props and shout outs to public school education. Mm-hmm. And um, I figured out I could get a paycheck by singing and dancing at the same time in summer stock. <laughs> and so like that, I just kind of brought that with me, had a general with Telsey and the casting, com- the casting company. And she was like, do you, do you dance? And I was like, yeah. And I'm a dance major. So it was so much fun to like sing first and then get a call back to dance, you know? That's amazing. And, but the reading of the sides were not great because who knows? <laughs> I was 22 and green and I had no idea who Lynn was, who Alex, Alex Lackamore was, who Tommy Kale yeah, was, this whole hot show coming from off Broadway. And I sang I'm Every Woman, Whitney Houston. Oh. My favorite, my favorite memory, like nervous as heck. I finished my 16 bars and Lynn goes, I just love that song. Whoa 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 and he starts singing it <laughs> oh i love that so much <laughs> but i didn't get a call back and so then a year <laughs> later i was uh doing a chorus line the first national and mm. i went back for a callback an audition a callback and i luckily was on the east coast and krista left so i was able to be like one of the first replacements wow. in that show and i did it for like uh i would say about four I think two, almost a little over two years. So I was the closing cast. Wow. Wow. Incredible. What was that experience like? Oh, it was my honeymoon in New York. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Oh, incredible. (laughs) I mean, I was 22. No, 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 no. I was 24 through 26, making that Broadway money Mm -hmm. and dating a guy, John Rua, in the the whole show. We were both understudies. Oh, we thought we were getting married. Yeah, we thought we were getting married. And uh, three and a half years, the best showmance. I mean, he was a he was a swing. I was an understudy, so we were there all day. I mean, it was the best summers in New York. And like the last show, when you know when we get our cell phones out during the club blackout scene, mm-hmm. and everyone, yeah, everyone in the audience got their phones out, and like it was this beautiful ocean of glowing phones in that number. I mean, we had to hold every song. It was incredible, wow. and. I'm so happy that the film waited as long as it did because he did try producing and selling the pitching the idea with Kiara and it fell through. Uh, mm. Like I remember he posted it like on Facebook. He was like, well, guys, it's not happening. And it's just, we really want to do it our way. And because of Hamilton, he had just a lot more clout and he really could do it his way. He finally, you know, I have to say like, not that he proved himself, but like he was just trusted and he had that power. So mm. the power behind his, his talent. And um, yeah. I'm so glad and so excited. Bum that it got delayed, but I think it's worth it. Yeah. I love that he has like, now he has like the Tyler Perry level of power, yes. but instead he's continuing the like artistic route of like really taking time to cultivate mm. projects he cares about like a documentary for his dad like bro what is yeah. wrong with you so much power and you're so nice like I that, know. that's insane to me. i know and like he actually showed up when i texted him i was like hey you know our cast crazy x like we're gonna perform at radio city i do you want to come? You know, Rachel, Rachel feels like, you know, you're out of her grasp. So if you could do me that solid, I feel like I could really impress people, but more so like, you know, like, I don't know if you're not busy. And he was like, yeah. And then he shows up <laughs> and like, mm-hmm. hangs out in my dressing room and he's my friend, Wow! And, but you could feel like everyone's energy be like, <laughs> Lynn's here. Like, and so oh everyone's like, God. everyone's like cycling into the dressing room, trying to like, hi, 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 you know, and he's just like, <laughs> He's just so chill and so kind. I saw him on his 40th birthday. Oh, how enough. fun. He was like in Pearl and I was like sitting there for a callback. It, but it's also those people that you see in the hallway and you're like, you know what? I am those people. You know, mm. you have to remember that. You're like, I actually am in that category because I'm in Pearl Studios. So like when you, when you remember that, it's quite, I don't, I don't want to say like, you know, you're blowing up steam up your butt or anything, but it's more like, it's comforting because you're like, yeah. I am enough. My break did, hasn't happened. And, you know, it's so much fun to talk about everything I've done, but like everything that didn't happen, oh my God, it completely outweighs all of that. The reason I auditioned for Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is because 
on your feet didn't happen like 15 times for me. And that wow. whole audition season in New York, every time in that freaking Pearl Studios elevator, you know, at the point of my career, like eight years in, you know, everybody in the audition, it's, it's appointment only for the dance calls and whatever. And so we're all up on the elevator and they're like, Hey, and I'm Gabby in New York, by the way, I'm mm. Gabrielle now, now that I, you know, hit 10,000 followers, it's just Gabrielle. And yes. so <laughs> that's sarcasm. But um, <laughs> I remember in the elevator at that whole audition season, I was like, Gabs, you're doing on your feet. I mean, you have to, you're going to do it. Right. Oh no, you're going to do it. Right. And mm. I was like, I've auditioned for it, but like, it hasn't hit. I know Sergio very mm. well. I know Jerry very well. I know Lon Hoyt very well, the music director. And like, it just never happened. Mm. And finally, like the final callback that they brought me in again for like one of the older women understudy, like the women in the river or whatever, they mm -hmm. have a few mm -hmm. lines and whatnot. And I looked around and everyone's maybe 20 years older than me. And I remember texting Philip. I was like, they're just being nice now. Like they're trying mm. to fit me in this show and it's not going to happen. Mm. And I auditioned for Crazy X, that self tape that finally was returned back from outer space, like all of those mm. self tapes go. And yeah. um, it was meant for me. I also wanted to ask you about um, you won an uh, indie film award for Sex, Love, and Salsa, uh, I believe. Like, what was that, that experience is like? Correct. Because <laughs> I've never, I've, I've, I've never like done um any indie films or anything like that or i don't know anything about how they work like can you explain a little bit about what that experience oh they're a like? mess they're an absolute mess <laughs> <laughs> as you can tell my tone on how my experience went but um <laughs> i i i mean that was like after hours after in the heights uh we would mm. we would shoot from like 10 to 2 because that was my availability except on a monday and um and also there were a lot of club scenes anyway so it worked out adrian monsano bless his heart but mm. i i could never work with him again and he can hear yeah. this and he knows it <laughs> <laughs> it's all love that's how many strikes that man and i would combat we would combat yeah. on just how to be a professional my schooling was not being an artist like not show begging it's show business right and so like show up, have options, be ready, be warm, be memorized. And like, it was just kind of never respected that way. And so yeah. unfortunately my experience was like, let's just get this done. Yeah. And um, I, I, however, made as much lemonade as I could out of it. I showed up, I wasn't, I don't think I was rude when I saw, <laughs> I hope I wasn't, but when I saw <laughs> it in post and we were doing some ADR for it, like some voicing over stuff, it ended up being absolutely beautiful to look at. That's and so I was happy with the outcome of it all. And I can talk, you know, artistic theory on anything. He did get it together to make some award uh, things and nominations and I got to win something. So it's actually legit. On that note too, can you talk a little bit more about uh, as an actor, what your process is like when you have a difficult um, creative team or when, you know, you're not really seeing eye to eye with the creative team, because I know that that's a very difficult experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as artists, we're very subjective to what we do. We take it personally. We are, it is a personal attachment emotionally and spiritually, I think. And so it's okay that you and I don't have to be friends forever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, not everybody yeah, has to get along, especially Not everybody has to exactly yeah especially like in this. career and that's what you think sometimes when you're like oh we all have to be friends because we're going on the road together for a year and you're like yeah i i don't mind having dinner with you but like are we going to be lifelong maybe that's just me uh, i know some people in in the in the showbiz world that everyone knows as their best friend mm. like courtney reed is one of those people you know she's just like you Yo, meet her you see Cambodian rock band i i was not there no i was not in new york oh <laughs> it's incredible. I think they will get another chance because, I, like, but like one of the shows. Yeah, seen. and she's like on a personal level, just like everyone. She's so wonderfully like everyone. She can be there in that way for so many people. I'm just not. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. It and really like I is. try, and I try, and like you know, try to not be myself, and like I might, I like to think I'm friendly. I think I am, but like you are. It's like kind of like a boss lady that way sometimes, which is okay. <laughs> It's totally fine. You're a human being. Like, you don't have to be on. <laughs> yeah, I also think, like, as a woman, especially in theater and just the industry in general, you kind of have to be a boss lady in order to, like, 
assert yourself and like you know not get pushed around like because yeah. we're still even today dealing with women not getting equal pay um in terms of like theater and film so i definitely agree with that yeah i i, I think so and, and i just think you being yourself kind of gives you a genuine attachment to people as who yeah. you are and it's less stress but like i'm telling you it's it's uh it's a thing i i deal with all the time like i don't think they like me <laughs> <laughs> Why wasn't I asked to the dinner party? It's fine. <laughs> it's fine, but it's not, but it's fine. I resonate with that so much. <laughs> can we can we talk about a chorus line for a second? I'm sorry. Oh, because my I can talk about that for hours and hours and hours. Oh, okay. Uh, you need to know when I was 14 years old, I started doing community theater. It okay. like down the street from me and I did a chorus line. They did the same production like three times over that whole year. And I was Al at 14 years old with my hot pitch voice. I was Jeez. Richie for four uncomfortable performances. Oh and God. Was, and um, it, it just, it taught me how to dance. It taught mm -hmm. me what like these, what I'm actually doing and what I'm sacrificing. And like, as I've evolved, I've gone back to watch productions of A Chorus Line, you know, those little, those little Reddit bootlegs. Cause oh, yeah. like, I don't, I don't get enough <laughs> of it. Gems. So, talk about booking Diana Morales. Oh my goodness. Don't you just love everyone's A Chorus Line story though? Like everyone has a good one. Everyone has a good one. It's so A Chorus Line. It it's is. so A Chorus Line. <laughs> so the first <laughs> musical that came to South Texas that my dad took me to was A Chorus Line. Maybe, maybe it was actually Fosse and I had no idea what was happening. You know that Fosse show? You're just like, what's happening? Yeah. Why, yeah. why are they naked? <laughs> All of a sudden, it, 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 a con you know, it's a concept show. And as a dancer, you're like, I, I don't, did, was there supposed to be a story? And there's not. So maybe like my first, the first show that impacted me, which not a lot of shows would go all the way down to South Texas. And um, it was a chorus line. And there's one Latina, Deanna Morales. So I was like, great, that, that's who I need to be. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's yeah. who I relate to. And um, I memorized the entire album, I think on cassette in the back third row of my dad's Suburban because there's like a separate, there's like an extra for all those kids born in the 80s. There's like that, you know, that there's that extra cassette player in the third row of the Suburban. Mm -hmm. So you get your own like, you get your own like music station back there. <laughs> so I would sit back there and memorize and write down every lyric. And uh, so cut to college. Um, where I learned that I could get a paycheck for singing and dancing. I was hired at Music Theater of Wichita. Wayne Bryan gave me my first chance. Yes. Gave my first chance doing musical theater. And I think the second year was they did a chorus line. And it was the first time in an audition room where I, again, dancer first, uh, mm -hmm. where I sang the shit out of that song. And I was like, yeah. I need to be able to own this. Or at least in my Nothing head. Nothing, what I did for love. At 18, what I did for love. And... Um, well, you know, Gobs, you're a dancer, but like, let's see if you can sing it. And this was like, okay, this is my chance. I have to prove myself. So I usually proving myself doesn't really scare me. And um, I did. And I just remember that moment. It was like, oh, I'm doing it. And so then I was able to perform that. Got laryngitis like the week before. It was very dramatic. You know, the stairways kicked in just in time. Oh. And that's when I learned the original choreography. And we learned it like in four days. It was insane. Wow. And nobody it took leaves. Me a month to learn no, that and dance. we we learned yeah, and we learned the original choreography. And I'll tell you who was in that oh. cast. You ready? Tommy Brocco. Uh, We're having him on. Tommy He's Brocco, uh, Caitlin Davidson, Sheena Ann Morris, David Hull. Oh, crazy! Helene, Helena York. Oh wow! This is college all star cast. Okay, who else was? Let's see. I have to go down the line. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Who was Cassie? Nancy LeManager. Oh. Work. Yes. Oh, yeah. Who was our... Who's Paul? I'm who skipping the Paul? line. Who's Paul? I'll tell you who Paul was. I got to look at that photo. So yeah. I, I, I did that in college. And then um, junior year in college, a chorus line was coming back in the revival. Is coming back as the revival and uh i flew to new york to audition for that so if you watch the um documentary yeah. there's a moment in that crowd at the 42nd street studios where I'm, there's a girl like with long hair sitting with her backpack her jansport her red jansport on the phone that's me 
Oh my I gosh. did a double pirouette and got cut. And so those auditions were Tondu second, position four, fourth position, double pirouette, land, cut or not cut. That was it. Biorkley went 10 people in a row, 10 lines back, wow. double pirouette, double pirouette. Everyone had a, their own chance to show your double pirouette to Biorkley. And Biorkley's that was the first cut of a chorus line. And I didn't get kept. And so I flew my ass back to college. <laughs> mm. um, and um, there was a time, I think, I think when I did it in Summerstock, um, an agent, Betts Malone's husband, Steve Glaudini, who worked for an agency, he now uh, has his own theater company, I think in Southern California somewhere. It's like a great, beautiful amphitheater, outside theater, mm-hmm. and um, near San Diego, I think. And uh, he gave me his business card. And he was like, I work for an agent in New York. Call me when you graduate. I think you're great. So I kept that little card in my weekly planner for two or three <laughs> years and wow. called and emailed him. And the New York company called and the, uh, they were like, yeah, sure. You know, Steve recommended you, of course. Can you come to LA on your spring break of senior year? And I said, I'm actually already flying to New York for spring break. Uh, my college does this huge spring break program. I, w- I know you guys are bi-coastal. And I talked them into basically seeing me in New York. And I stayed like a few days after spring break ended and got a letter cut from missing ballet class because I was like, bye, bye school. I'm going to New York. Give me a B. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, that's when I met my agent who got me an audition in front of Bender Casting, Nicole, yeah. uh, Nicole with a K. And she, um, I, I, I auditioned for it again. I did an open call and this time I did a ballet warm up, So the double pirouette was nailed and I, um, was kept coached me on the lines as an actor, you know, cause my acting wasn't as, uh, strong or experienced as my dancing and my singing. Mm-hmm. And, um, I remember getting the call that, and this is when IATSE was on strike. So Broadway was actually closed for a while oh. in 2007. And Natalie Cortez was supposed to not renew her contract. So there was a, a split second where I was going to replace her guys on Broadway, just moving to New York. Could you imagine? Wow. Ridiculous. That didn't happen. And they said, Hey, so Natalie's taking her contract anyway, because of IOTC, everyone was losing money, like everyone's right now. They were like, Can you, would you be interested in the national tour? And I was like, Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just graduated from college. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. And like, so yeah. So I got to do it for a year. I learned a lot about her. I learned what it was to take care of my body, my instrument. Um, it really taught me my routine. Um, and I think I've done it two more times after that. One was at, uh, man, this is bringing it back. One was at Pittsburgh. In Pitt- Pittsburgh uh, there's Music Theater? Summer- yes, Pittsburgh Music Theater. That's when Rue and I broke up. And I'll never forget what I did for love was so different. <laughs> oh, and then, but I remember for the first national, when I booked in the Heights, I remember getting the chance to tell everybody that I booked and I was leaving. I was putting my four-week notice in. Mm. And I had that Jody Sawyer center stage moment where everyone claps for you. Aww. I'll never forget that. I will never forget that. And then Deanna's, of course, her monologue at the end before what I did for love. And she was like, one day, you know, I, I've seen those girls on that stage door. And one day I know I could do that, you know, and she's like, I'll never be that old. And like that whole, everyone was just looking at me. They're like, we're so proud of you. You're making your Broadway Aww. debut. <laughs> and then i mean i could keep going but oh before i left for the tour i saw in the heights and previews (laughs) and like priscilla okay like priscilla's like always been a dream since i knew her name on my cassette that i bought at that harlingen show of a chorus line in harlingen Mm. texas and i waited by the stage door with my sister she was visiting from DC and it was raining at Richard at the Richard Rogers theater. And I'm like, Karen Olivo, get out of my way. Lynn move. Where's Priscilla Lopez. And I, <laughs> I, was like, I don't care. You were great. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for the show. And I saw her and I guys, I had my business card in my back pocket, like a freaking nerd. And I was like, Priscilla Lopez, Priscilla Lopez. I'm going to be you. Mm-hmm. But that's all I said. And she's very confused. <laughs> oh, 
oh, I love that she was song. very confused and she was like, do you want an autograph? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, no. I love that. It was so but that's cringy. the type of I... confidence you need to have, no. though. <laughs> Yeah, be a fool. Like, not be afraid to make a fool of yourself. And I remember my sister, like, disappeared. She was so embarrassed for me. And um, yeah. then, like, again, a year later, I was under, I was on in In the Heights, and I was like, be cool, Gabrielle. Like, be cool. Be a colleague. Don't be a fan. And I told her that story maybe a year later. And I was able to be, like, her daughter sometimes because I understudied Nina. And, oh. I mean... I had her sign my shoes, my sneakers, wow. and she wrote to Deanna from Morales, dead. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> you still got that shoe, right? Oh, yeah. Shoes. Shoes. My sneakers, shoes. yeah. My, well, they, they, they crafted, you know, they gave us our, they shaped those sneakers to my foot for the first national tour. Like, I got hmm. customized sneakers that I still, I mean, I'm not doing that show again, but, like. <laughs> I used them. I used them every time. And mm. um, that was truly special because she was able to come see me perform it at Paper Mill when Marvin Hamlish <sighs> passed and Paper Mill was doing it. That was the last time I did it. And wow. it was so much fun to be like, she was like, you were great and amazing. And they asked all of the alum to come on stage. There's a, there's a picture of it somewhere. Um, and I got to do the final number with her next to me. I mean, wow. dreams, 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 dreams. That was my favorite moment where I was like, I get to do, <sighs> I think like paper mill on YouTube has like a snippet of it. And we're standing right there. You can see me and Priscilla and she like everybody, all the original cast members or anyone that has did the show or whatever, they were just like on, you know, it was just so much wow. fun to like experience that with them. One. <laughs> And I think that's the last uh, time I did it. Um, that show means so much to me. I realized as you were finishing up, this is my chorus in my pad from when I was 13 years old. Amazing. And like, yeah. I feel like every time I did that show, what I did for love was very different. And you know, sure, that yeah. what happens if you can't start, stop, when, if you have to st stop dancing, like all of those things, like as you get older, because I'm 35 now and like, as you get older, you're just like, I mean, I have a permanent injury in my foot that started because of a chorus line now oh. plus 10 years ago. So and so, you know, you just, you really appreciate that show for what it did. I mean, Bayark has all the stories too. And, mm. you know, it's, it's truly an honor to be in that family. Bayark actually directed a chorus line um, at my college. I wasn't in it. I didn't make it. I was in final callbacks though, but. No, but by by York plays zero games. <laughs> she plays she plays zero games. And and I remember like what I did for love with her every time. Like I just remember telling her like about my heartache and like my the changes and like and I remember getting super sick during paper mill and I couldn't go back mm. to work and and that show kills you and makes you and she was always there. She was always there to like support and give me that wise words of like the next chapter of my life. And it always start it always like the chapter always turned, the page always turned with a chorus line. <laughs> I mean, wow. It's just basically life imi being imitated with by art. It really was. It really, really was. By the way, do you know that um Ryan you heard about Ryan Murphy's mini series that he he's making with a chorus line, right? I did not. He is adapting, he got this like thick Netflix deal. He's got, he was the politician, now Hollywood, just came out yesterday. Yeah. Watch it every week. And um, it's Boys in the Band. Uh, and then uh, Chorus Line is uh, part of the deal and The Prom. But he's writing the miniseries right now and he's going to put it on Netflix. It's, oh, that's so great. I'm, I'm so excited for it. Um, I also wanted to ask you about that transition from Broadway to TV uh Chris Chris and I like we're, we're talking about that and like what getting like going into the audition you're talking about self tapes um what what do you find the fundamental difference of uh like auditioning for theater versus auditioning for TV the fundamental difference of auditioning specifically yeah mm. <sighs> getting blowouts instead of just showing up ready to dance. I'm just kidding. Getting to the dry bar, <laughs> looking cute. Oh my God. <laughs> um, for, it's actually a thing, it's weird. But um, really? 
One thing I remember learning from a self from a, uh, a TV audition class that I thought was very interesting because somebody asked the casting director that and it, it really made a lot of sense. Once I moved over here, was able to compare it. He's like, New Yorkers, so theater, right? New Yorkers are completely overly exposed by other humans all day. And then in LA, you're completely isolated all day until you actually make the commitment to go out somewhere and see people. So New Yorkers uh, audition with all of New York on them, the aggression, the angst, the anxiety. And then, uh, so it looks like LA people are a little more calm when they walk into a room versus New Yorkers like, oh, hi, I made it. Okay, go sing. Let's do it. You know what I mean? And so in LA is just like, hello, how are you? Yes. Oh my God. It's so good to see you. Congrats on that thing I saw on Instagram, you know? (laughs) And so- and so that's, I think, the fundamental thing is like how people walk in the room yeah. um, and how you introduce your first moment for whether people want to work for, with you or not. Um, they do have a big difference in that. And there's one shot, you know, like when you're in a dance call or you're doing theater and you're learning the music or you can run it again, there's really just one moment with the casting director that feels like 20 seconds long and every and i feel like with te- with theater auditions i at least knew the space a lot because i was i mean maybe because i was there longer but you can see there's a holding room that looks exactly like the audition room but in la every room is different you have no idea what you're going to walk into whether it's just you the casting director and a video camera or mm-hmm. you and 15 pro- 15 executive producers the directors in Canada on Skype there, they have a video of you so they can see what you look like on television while you're auditioning. Mm. And oh, the wow. Disney CEO is in the back corner because he happened to be able to come on his lunch break, you know? And so you're just like, every time you, I walked in a room in LA, it was so different. And so sometimes yeah. that would throw me off. So when I would work on my lines with my husband, of course, I say, okay, let's switch rooms. Let's go to the kitchen. Okay, let's go to the living room. Let's go to here. Let's like, let me, and I have like a little X and I'd be like a little X where I'm, what I'm looking at. And I was like, I have to imagine myself in specific places because one room is like a tiny hallway with a couch where the creator of the show's knees are touching yours while you're auditioning. And the camera is like extreme to the right. So you're like, do I present it to him or do I present it to him? Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's so, it's so as a dancer, and we're very spatially aware of peripheral. Right. And so like we watch everything around us. And as an actor, you're supposed to really focus just on the reader. Right. And yeah. so right. that for me was the fundamental difference that yanked me really yeah. hard in Hollywood where I was like, I have to be so on my lines that whatever comes my way, I can You're just, ready. I can just pretend it's not happening. Exactly. Like when we're rolling and we're rolling on television and you, if you're, and usually with Valencia, my, my coverage sometimes would end up being like the pressure coverage of like, we have to get this. If not, we're going into um, a lunch penalty, which like doubles all the, all the crew's money and the producers don't want to pay for that. So they have to break for lunch. So get the shot. So Gabrielle has to not forget our lines, right? I'm not going to be the culprit of it. So that was one thing for me. It's like the distractions of everything around you is very television. And in theater, maybe you start getting used to like after doing a show for a while, you start getting to used to hearing distractions, but they don't phase you because you do it so often. And And in television, you do it once. And then they, right. they fix, they put it together in post and it's all out of order. I think we've had this, this phenomenal conversation. Yeah. It started so real. It, it, well, it started <laughs> fun. Then it got real. And once it got <laughs> real, we were able to cut deep. And once we were able to cut deep, we were able to just have the most fun, on, have the most fun. Just and an explosion uh, <laughs> in closing, I want to give you the chance to talk about Broadway babysitters. Sure, Fosti Mom Point and I did a show together like over 10 years ago and I was just asked to guest on it. And I am a huge arts educator, philanthropist, advocate. So I was very happy to be able to do that. And Vosti and her team really know what they're doing, which was really fun. Again, the professionalism thing for me. Uh, she has it not she has it broken down into a specific science of when we show up as the guest, um, gets you the 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 book that you're reading, the children's book that you're reading virtually and has a great assistant in New York. 
And it was just so much fun. I mean, if I wasn't, if I wasn't in any way in the artistic industry, I would be a child psychologist. That would always be like my real job dream, I always would say. So mm. working with children, theater and children at uh, dance is my favorite. And so yeah. it was super fun. And Philip plays the guitar, my husband. And so he was able to play with yeah. me. And I did an off-Broadway show called Skippy John Jones, which is a children's book. <gasps> yes, and, I see that. Yeah. And so I was able to like sing. And I, I requested that book since I knew some tunes here and there with the, with the text that it was yeah. inspired by. So that was really fun to revisit. It's funny that you say that because uh, Chris and I, the reason we started this podcast is because we of Skippy uh, John lost Jones. jobs on Oh. No, oh god, that would be that would be wild. It, because of Skippy John Jones, we read the book. We have and a mutual love for it. Wanted to start a podcast. Um, yes. No, we were both doing TYA theater. Um, well, Chris was in the middle of it with Theater Works, and yes, I was I about to start my contract the next week. And um, I was going to live with my sister in Philly. Thank you. You know, I feel like um, a lot. It, if, when we complain now, I feel I'm I'm much more cautious about what I'm complaining about yeah, because there are, there are a job is just a job, especially in our industry. We're you also know? alive. Like exactly. Yeah. We're also alive, and we're you know that's the biggest thing. Yeah, like, yeah. But quarantine sucks. We know that. We all. Yeah. No. Of course. Of course. And that's at the same time, cool. like I don't know about you guys with with being forced upon like we're just being forced to create in your circumstances that's what yeah. actors that's what artists do that's what we've mm. been doing that's what van gogh did that's what renaissance era did you know that's what war yeah. did pre-war post-war i mean music came out of every difficult situation so what's really cool is seeing the industry reinventing themselves and po the poor accountants and bankers like they don't know what to do like that's all they they're like, this is what I decided. This is what I'm doing until I can get retirement. And I'm just like, if only you were an artist, you would figure it out because we reinvent ourselves every day, you know? And so I have to say, I've never been busier. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. It's crazy. Yeah. I, so, you know, Zoom yeah. reading one, Zoom reading two to like yes, a production I, for a podcast, to elevating underrepresented voices for a how, theater company. I'm crazy, more man. concerned on how we're going to go back with all of these commitments we made. Like, how are we going to do it? <laughs> well, if I'm going to be frank with you for the theater, it's, I think we have some time. Sorry, I know. But it's a bummer. It's, it's a pill people haven't really swallowed yet. And like, because they're theater people, I'm just telling yeah. you, swallow that pill. No, I, I, I know. I, and I think also... The, the the Hollywood scene loved a lot of us theater people and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend because we were resilient. We figured it out. We are problem solvers. We don't take no for an answer. We don't take, well, it's not, it's just not going to work and then move away. That's a very like maybe non-theatrical, I don't want to just say LA thing, but some people are like, well, it's not going to work. Bye. And like theater is like, <laughs> how do we make this work? Because I want it to happen. So You're, yeah, it, I don't think I... Going. I'm concerned for the psychology of all the Broadway people. I feel for them. I, I'm, I'm sure they're filing for unemployment. I guess they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One hundred percent, because they made enough. And they can apply for emergency resources through Actors Fund. Yeah, and so it's, yeah. it's a bust. Their physical capabilities of doing the show that they were committed to, like they got to stay in shape. Like they're athletes. We're all athletes, and the training exactly. is being restricted. I'm, I am... I, I'm praying for them. I'm, cur I'm curious on how it's going to happen. Because, I mean, at one person gets sick backstage. It's a Petri dish back there. I mean, everyone yeah. gets sick. So, it's, so yeah. It, it, it's tough, but we will, we will persist. Well, you know? and as, I mean, as well as, you know, the biggest advice or the only turnaround that you can do right now that has been working for me for two years and I just had my tipping point is we all can do voiceover work. And nobody, nobody, uh, I mean, Hollywood and voiceover act, voice animation, and then theater like have always been separate. So this might force itself to introduce an entire different field of actors that have not pursued that yet. So it has been so incredible having you on. Oh, I, thank you I, I don't for know asking about you me. Too. But it's, I've learned so much from you just through this conversation. So thank you so much. Well, you guys' tagline really got me. I was like, That's hysterical. <laughs> yes, I support this brand. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back whenever. I want to ask you very ququickly for the details of your performance um, that's coming up, if as much as you know. Oh, them. yeah. I have to grab my phone. 
I already said yes, and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> That's so good. Gabrielle is replacing John Legend in the following. That's day. what we're saying. That's what my game my, my publicists say. <laughs> That's what we're going with. Who's on retainer? Because I can't afford her. <laughs> okay. We need um, that bio. Gabrielle Ruiz is John Legend. <laughs> there it is. Hashtag is John Legend. John Legend's understudy. Yes. So, so okay. Time for kids is what you can find on Instagram. You can find their account. Um, is collaborating with Explanation Kids, which is another children's foundation, to gather everyone to celebrate teachers who are making the difference during these times. It's called Get Happy Hour during Giving Now Tuesday, or no, Giving Tuesday Now is the hashtag. And usually that happens after Thanksgiving, where it's a big donation day for our organizations to just ask for um, a boost in, especially nonprofits. It's mm -hmm. giving teachers a hashtag million dollar thank you. So Colin Powell is saying thank you, John Legend, and I think Chrissy are also saying thank you with videos. And you can follow along at Get Happy Hour on Instagram, at Explanation, Explanation Kids, and at Time for Kids, which I think is affiliated with Time Magazine. Mm. Yes. So I was asked to sing an original song and uh, yes. videotape that as a segue in between some things. And I'm trusting the higher being producers who are figuring out and they asked me specifically to sing an original song that could be insp inspiring and inspirational in this time. And we luckily had already made one called yeah. Hug Yourself For Me by my husband, Philip Ascension. And we will share it. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. Of course. Thanks for having me.